Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This week's video is going to be a little bit different from my regular content. Instead of unpacking an essay or talking about an art movement, I'm going to be talking about my experience training to become an art teacher and then being an art teacher here in London. So alongside this YouTube channel, for the last three years, I've also trained and then become an art teacher. And that's been a very intense experience with positives and negatives. And I wanna unpack all of that in this video. So if you're thinking of maybe becoming an art teacher or it's just something you're considering, hopefully this video will be very informative for you. It's gonna be a combination of useful kind of tips and stuff like that, but it will be grounded in my experience because that's the only thing I really feel like I can talk about with any confidence. And yeah, so I'm gonna start by talking about the qualities that make a good art teacher. Then I'm gonna go on to talk about how you actually become an art teacher. I'm gonna talk about something called a PGCE. There's other ways to do it, but I did the PGCE way, so that's the only way I really know about, so I'm gonna talk about that. Um, then I'm going to talk about what it's like to actually be an art teacher. I'm going to give you some pros and cons, all that stuff. Um, and then I'm also going to tell you why I've decided to stop being an art teacher. So I've never done timestamps before and probably it probably won't work knowing me. But with any luck, there'll be timestamps at the bottom. I don't know, maybe not. So what qualities make a good art teacher? Well, number one, you have to like art. That seems really obvious, but you know, I've met art teachers who I'm not convinced they like art. Um, whoa, that was like shady. Um, <laughs> what I mean basically is you have to be interested in um, art or creativity or visual culture. So that could be like craft or design or it doesn't have to be high art. It doesn't mean you have to like love Michelangelo and Picasso, but you have to enjoy making stuff or looking at stuff or kind of visual culture in some way, because you're gonna have to bring that to a bunch of children and be like, look, this is really cool. And if you don't think it's cool, they won't think it's cool. The second thing you need to be a good art teacher is an interest in learning and understanding how people learn, understanding how you learn. And I would say more than anything, a love of learning. If you don't have that, again, I don't think you're gonna be a very good teacher because teaching is about learning. The next quality that you need in order to be a good teacher is you have to actually enjoy spending time with young people and having conversations with them about the things they're interested in. I think it's actually one of the best bits of a job is you're around all these really open-minded people who are very excited about life but have so many questions and insecurities and assumptions and you need to challenge them but also they're going to challenge you and it's just a lot of dialogue and back and forth and generational assumptions constantly getting challenged in this way which is kind of like kind of a clash but also kind of a collaboration um you have to enjoy that process basically and the final thing i wrote down as what makes a good teacher you have to be very patient because you will be tested and you have to have a lot of empathy because kids need a lot of empathy they make mistakes they say hurtful things you have to be willing to take those hurtful words on the chin and keep going so yeah i'd say patience and empathy are qualities that any good teacher needs um cool so i'm going to talk to you a little bit about the process of becoming an art teacher i'm aware there's a few different ways i'm going to talk about something called a pgce which is a postgraduate certificate in education so I applied for a PGC when the pandemic started because I was out of a job, I was at home, I wasn't really sure what I'd do when the pandemic finished and as luck would have it, the UK government was funding people to do art and design PGCEs at the time. They're not funding it anymore, so I was really lucky. Anyway, I applied to do the PGCE programme with Goldsmiths and luckily I got accepted. It was actually a really good course, I'd recommend that course. Um, and yeah, then September came along and the course started. And I'm gonna give you a quick overview. I can break it down more in a separate video if that's what people want. But basically you turn up at your university on the first day and month number one is just loads and loads of lectures and talks and reading that you have to do all about learning and subject specific learning and stuff like that. 
I did not enjoy that first month. It was very dense and something I found kind of weird was like I had to submit my notes to prove that I was actually attending because a lot of it was on Zoom because of the pandemic. And I learned a lesson very quickly, which is that in education, it's not really about what you do. It's about what you've proven that you've done. And the reason why I had to submit the notes is to show you were there, to prove that you attended the lectures. Um, but yeah, so first month, just loads of talking about how to become a teacher, theoretical stuff. And then they send you off for your first school experience, which is from October till the end of December. Um, and in that school experience, you go to a school, you get a mentor at the school and slowly and steadily you start taking classes and observing other art teachers and you plan your lessons, you deliver your lessons, you get feedback from the teachers. Um, this was a horrendous experience for me. My mentor was quite a harsh person. I don't think she was a very nice person. And I really found it hard to gain any confidence because every time I would try and do something, obviously my lessons weren't very good because I was brand new. And I felt like my mentor was so harsh that I just, I lost confidence to try to keep trying. And like, it was really bad. I, like, I remember like, crying and wanting to leave and never come back and just quit the course but I held on and I kept going and eventually the end of December came along and I finished that school experience and like I barely passed it like really it was a mess but I did pass and um then after Christmas I got sent to a new school for my second school experience and that was a very different school with a different mentor and it was it just clicked really nicely i felt very supported i really felt like i could start planning lessons the way i wanted to teach them and i could practice like my behavior management a bit more and working out the kind of teacher i wanted to be because i didn't feel like i had this like very critical mentor just like tearing apart everything i did before i could build on it um so that was really really good and that second experience is much longer. It goes on until like met from like January till May. So you get a bit more time at the school. Oh, the lights. Whoa. Sorry about that. My light. I think there's a ghost in the house. Um, on top of these two school experiences, um, there's definitely a ghost in the house. Um, you have to write two essays about learning. And these are quite long essays and it feels pretty unreasonable that the course would expect you to... I'm going to sort out the light. I think the ghost is gone, but they might still be here. Um, yeah, so it's, it's really, really difficult because on top of learning to become a teacher, learning how to plan lessons, learning how to organize yourself and how to manage classrooms the course expects you to write two essays and these are pretty long essays i don't remember how long i'm pretty sure it was like eight thousand words one of them which is long and the other one was a bit shorter but on top of your teaching you have to write these essays which means that in the holidays you're you're writing essays and you're reading all these academic texts blah 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 um yeah it's pretty horrendous um yeah, that was pretty much a PGC done. I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy, but that is how you become a teacher. There's also something called Teach First, which I've heard is even harder, but you get a small salary when you do it and you just go straight into teaching. I'm not really someone who should talk about that because I didn't do that, nor have I done research around it. But yeah, so this light is flickering and that's really annoying. Um, I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to come back and talk about the rest of this video, the rest of this topic. Okay, so we're back with some rejigged lighting. This lighting is not as nice as the previous lighting, but at least it's not flickering. And if you've watched this far, I imagine you're actually interested in the content rather than the lighting. So I'm just gonna get back into the content. So once you've finished your PGCE, you have your qualified teacher's status. Now you can apply for jobs as a qualified art teacher, which is kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie, after I finished my teacher training, my PGCE, I was so burnt out and discouraged that I actually thought maybe teaching is not for me. Um, but I did want to use this qualification in some way because like, you know, I had this ability to make more money than minimum wage now and do a specialist job. So 
I applied to be a supply teacher. I thought that would be a great kind of thing for me because it's very little commitment. You get a phone call at like seven in the morning. They say, go to this school. You turn up at the school, you do the job, you leave at 3.30, easy, done. Um, and I really enjoyed being a supply teacher. It was a really great way of earning money whilst also having time to pursue my own creative interests like YouTube and reading and writing and all that stuff, which I, like is great. And I wasn't convinced I wanted to be a teacher. The other thing that supply did for me, which was really good, was meant I went to like loads of schools. So I went to like, I specialised in special needs schools and I think I probably went to like between six and eight special needs schools all in South London. So after working as a supply teacher for about a few months, I realised there was one school in particular that I really liked and I really wanted to work there. The staff were friendly, the kids were great. They let me teach up the exact kind of art lessons I wanted to teach in the exact ways I wanted to teach them. And I just sort of felt like it was a really good match for me. So I kind of like asked, begged the head teacher to give me a permanent role, which she did. And I was really happy about that. And I've been at this school now for five academic terms, almost two years. And I'm actually about to leave that job now. So I thought this would be a great point at which to reflect not only on how to train to become an art teacher, but what's it like to be an art teacher, actually just working as a qualified art teacher in a school. So when you finally get your first teaching job, it's pretty crazy because you're just, you're given a classroom, you're given a class, and there's no mentor, there's no one really like watching over you. You can just do things the way you wanna do them. You can teach the lessons you wanna teach, you pick the artists you want your students to know about, you decide how you want your lessons to go. You you decide everything. Like, you're in full control all of a sudden. And, like, you know, people are aware of what you're doing, but no one's really checking or, like, sifting through your lesson plans or anything, which is, like, crazy. It's a lot of freedom. And I felt like that was the point where I really started to become the art teacher I wanted to become. Because, like, quite a lot of art education is about like learning how to draw faces really accurately or learning about shading and stuff like that and like I was kind of doing that on the PGCE because it was what everyone else was doing but that stuff doesn't interest me very much at all like I really got to figure out how I want to teach lessons and what I worked out for me is that it's really important that every lesson is grounded in art history and art theory so we always learn like key bits of vocabulary like what does abstract mean? What does realist mean? What does aesthetic mean? What does, I don't know, those kinds of words mean? Or like we learn about important art historical movements. Like I want all my students to know what, um, like who Jean-Michel Basquiat is and to have done a painting in the style of Jean-Michel Basquiat or who Keith Haring is or who Andy Warhol is and to know a bit of context around Andy Warhol. So it's not just he painted soup cans, but he was thinking about post-industrial America and consumer culture, and he was bringing together like high forms of art and low forms of art. Like, I want my students to be able to walk through a Tate Modern and be like, ah, that's a um, Andy Warhol 1957 Cabell soup can. Did you know he had a Cabell's soup every day for lunch? But it was more than just that. He was interested in repetition and breaking down the concept of authenticity. Like, I'm not sure if I'd say it exactly like that, but I'm just trying to drill these kinds of ideas into my students' heads. And then once we've done the theory, we'll have a practical thing, like we'll draw a soup can or make a soup can to kind of reinforce that theory. That's, that's kind of my way of doing a lesson. Um, and I was finally able to do that when I got the job. That's not something I learnt in training. That's something I learnt as a teacher. It's kind of like they say, you learn to drive once you get your license. I would say something very similar happens in um, education as well. So as this is YouTube um, and as everyone loves a pros and a cons list, I've decided to draw up a list of best and worst bits of being an art teacher. So we're gonna start with the worst so that we can finish on a high. Um, worst bits of being an art teacher. Number one, the workload. The workload is horrendous. There's a never ending amount of work to do and. There's something about schools where people just create new jobs all the time. Like, you can't finish your list of things to do because someone will turn up and invent a new thing for you to do. 
it's really frustrating and it's a part of school culture which I find really really annoying um, yeah so that's the first thing I find difficult this next thing is related to that there is a crazy amount of admin that you have to do as a teacher there's just so much paperwork there's so much training you have to create records of everything you do you have to evidence every lesson that you've taught the whole point of a sketchbook isn't to help kids to practice it's to keep a record of exactly what happened each week so that if Ofsted turn up you can be like hey look these are all the things I've done with my students because they may have learnt but unless you prove that they've learnt they didn't learn yeah so that's again what I meant when I said it's not about what you do it's about what you prove that you've done yeah and that's why there's one of the reasons why there's so much admin in education which I find exhausting the next thing is that schools and being a teacher takes over your life to the point where it's the only thing you do and when you're not doing it you're exhausted and that's kind of sad because it makes it really hard to do your own independent creative thing and I think a lot of us creatives we we're looking for a job which will support us but also give us time to do our own creative thing and it's quite hard to do that as a teacher because it's so consuming and it's so absorbing and it's so draining um, and the final thing which I really didn't enjoy about being an art teacher is marking. I mean, like, what is that? Why do I have to give little Tim's drawing of a duck a number between 1 to 10 to say how good his drawing of a duck is? And then little Tim's going to feel really bad because his drawing of a duck got a 4, but little Susan's drawing of a duck got an 8 because she does shading better. And then little Tim doesn't think that he's creative anymore. He doesn't think he's good and he's discouraged. And little Susan thinks that she's amazing because she does shading really well. So she stops experimenting. She stops trying because she wants to keep getting the eights because she doesn't want to get a seven because that will crush her little ego. When from the start, we could have just not given them numbers. We could have just encouraged them and shown them that there are loads of different ways to do art and acknowledge that this idea of giving number values to artworks is completely insane. Yeah. Um, marking sucks and I'm pretty sure the only reason we have to do it is to sort of make children conform to these kind of horrible capitalist structures where they're units of production and yeah that's another video in itself but um, I hate marking I think it's soul destroying for me and for the kids it's a legal obligation so I do do it but I hate it um, now let's talk about the best parts of being a teacher because there are things about this job which are really really wonderful and I want to finish on this that's why I did the worst bits first um, Without a doubt, the best thing about being a teacher is spending time with interesting, intelligent young people who just have so much curiosity about the world, they have so much creativity, they have so much to say, they have so much to learn, and you can challenge them, but also they can challenge you, they can bring all sorts of different energies and moods to the room, and you have to respond to that, and that's a very enriching experience, and the children I work with are honestly wonderful and I really, really enjoy working with them. And that's probably been the best bit about my job. The next thing about my job, which I really like, is it's very creative. Like I'm constantly having to think in a creative way. I'm constantly problem solving. Sometimes a child will come up to me and they'll be like, I want to make a Nintendo 3DS out of cardboard with a background that moves. And I have to use my knowledge of materials to be like, okay, so it's going to be a 3DS out of cardboard, but then how's the background going to move? How are we going to do that? Or how are we going to, like, I recently planned a series of lessons where we make our own cuddly toys, and I had to figure out a sort of a, a way in which 11-year-olds could make their own plushies. How's that going to work? Or, like, I want to teach my kids about brancusi, and I was thinking we could make our own brancusis out of, like, coffee cups from the staff room. And there's there's loads of examples of times in my job where I've been able to use lateral thinking or creativity and I find that really um, fulfilling. Speaking of fulfilling, the next thing that I really enjoy about my job is it is very fulfilling. Um, it's great to have a passion, to have something I really care about and to be able to share that with people and like I hope that the children that I'm working with are benefiting from my lessons. So. I'm able to offer something to my community and there are people whose lives are slightly better because I woke up and went to work that day. And that's really good. That's really nice. I think that's really good for my mental health. Um, yeah, so like you get the chance to give back and that feels really fulfilling. 
um, and you get the chance to make a difference because not only are you sharing your interests but also as a teacher you have a pastoral role you do like you look out for the well-being and the safeguarding of children and that's a really important responsibility um, and it can be a lot of pressure but it also makes you feel good about yourself like you're a good person who's making the world a better place and that's really nice um, the next thing which I really like about being an art teacher is having a stable income it's really, really nice to know that money is going to be in my account at the end of every month, especially like as creatives, we are often in situations where we don't have stable incomes. And this is a way that creative people can live a lifestyle where they have a stable income, which is great. Like that's really, really nice. And I've really enjoyed that aspect of being an art teacher. And the final thing which I've really enjoyed about my work is my new teacher friends and school friends. Like people who work in education but especially people who work in special needs education are just wonderful really nice people and I've made so many friends with other teachers or other members of teaching staff at my current school and that's been a really really positive thing about my job so yeah those are my good things and before I sign off I'm going to explain a little bit about why I'm leaving um I have really really enjoyed my job but I've also found it incredibly draining i found it really hard like the workload's been really hard my anxiety's been really high my sleep's got worse um, and i think that is mostly due to pressure demand and workload which i think which i've really struggled with um over the last two years um but also more than that like there are other things i want to do i don't think i could just be a teacher for the next like 30 or 40 odd years and then retire like I really, really want to get a PhD and become a lecturer in art history or art theory or something like that. So I can only really do that if I leave secondary education for a while. Um, so yeah, there's kind of two reasons. Reason number one is it's just not a healthy job. Like the pressure and the demand of the workload are really high and that's had an impact on my mental health and on my health in general and on my sleep. Um, but reason number two, there are other things I want to pursue. Um, I think I'd definitely go back into supply teaching. That's actually a pretty good gig. Um, I definitely don't regret doing my PVC. I think it's really helped me with like this platform, YouTube. Like, It's another way of expressing my enthusiasm for art and visual culture. And I really think it's going to help me with what I do next. And like, who knows, I've got the qualifications, so I can always come back into teaching in secondary schools. But I do want to do other things now, like I feel like I've learned quite a lot. I've done it for two years, and now I kind of want to go somewhere else. So yeah, that's pretty much my experience. And I hope this video has been helpful if this is something you're considering doing. Um, if you have any specific questions, like drop them in the comments. Um, I was also thinking I could do another video where I share some of my lesson plans because one of the hardest things, especially when you start becoming an art teacher, is like figuring out what to teach and what would be a good lesson and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, let me know if there's any other like things you want me to talk about in regards to becoming an art teacher because I, I can share that here. I've got this platform. Why not? And if it's your first time watching this video, this channel, um, check out my other stuff. I've got loads of other stuff. It's kind of different. But if you're thinking of becoming an art teacher, you're probably going to like my other content. Uh, thank you for watching, guys. Bye-bye.